this video shows step-by-step -step how to go through the setup of an Alphapix Evolution CPU to set up a standard megatree, typically 16 strings by 50 pixels each, then configure that in X lights, then go ahead and create a sequence. Now, if you're not using X lights and using another application, that's perfectly fine. There may be some slight differences. See your vendor's documentation on how to do that. Now, this video also assumes that you're going to be setting up a tree that's at least under 170 pixels per output. That's pretty normal. Most outputs usually are maybe around 100. Uh, and in this example, we're just using 50. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Now, we are going to start our configuration here at the web interface. Now, if you don't yet have access to the web interface uh, and are not familiar with that, see our other videos on how to configure the controller to connect to your network so that you can access it via web browser to do this configuration. Now, a few pieces to note here. We have our IP address of our controller listed up here, and that's the same one we went to it in the browser. And then we just need to figure out what we need to send data to to this controller. So let's first explain what's set up in this controller. So this controller actually has, at the top of the three possible expansion boards, a differential long range. Now, in this particular case, we are not using that. That would typically be used for some candy canes or snowflakes or a star on the tree or something like that. And if you do need that information about how to set that up, see our videos under holidaycore.com forward slash long range. All right, now in our particular case, we have the expansion board, but we're not going to be utilizing it uh, for long range. We're gonna skip right down to our next board. In this case, it's on port two or the second board in the connection. So the boards are oriented CPU at the top. That's the thing with the display. Then the second, the first board, then the second board, then the third board. And in this particular case, we have 16 port SPI. And just SPI is nothing more than these cables right here, these outputs that go to the pixels and they have power and data running down them. And that's an SPI connection. And if we go down a little further, we can also see that there is no expansion board on port three. In this case, this controller is just not configured with it uh, and is not utilized. It's available as a future expansion possibility, uh, but not used. So there's some other options down here, including uh, testing, and uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Okay, now the main information we're concerned about is these universes. Now the controller right out of the box looks just like this. It has 170 pixels configured, which is the maximum within what's called a DMX universe. And for our uses, as long as we're not running more than 170 pixels, which is pretty common, uh, if you're running over 170, that's more advanced and you would need to see some of our other videos. Um, and in this particular case, we say, great, We'll just use output 17, and in this particular case, output 17 would be mapped to output 1. It's shifted, uh, and they would go 17 through 32, um, or 1 through 16. So sometimes you'll see these shifted, and it all just depends on when your controller is made, how it was configured, and customized. Now you'll see that it also says that we have 170 pixels, which we don't have configured. It will be sending 170 pixels worth of data, but... For this purposes, we're just going to leave that alone. We technically are using 50, but that doesn't matter at this point. Now, if you also want to, you can go down here and you can do some testing. So once you get your pixels hooked up, you can put it into test mode by going up here and you could do something like red, green, blue change, and then say uh, configured lights. That would be all the ones that we've configured up here up to 170. And we could say, put it into test mode right here. And you can also invoke test mode directly from the controller by pressing the far left button, the M button. Okay, so in this particular case, everything is fine. It's out of the box. We're good to go. We only really actually are concerned with the universe numbers, which are 17 through 32, and the IP address of our controller. So now we're going to fire up X lights in this case. And we're going to go to the controllers tab. And we're going to say... Add Ethernet, and Ethernet is the interface for which we send data to the controller. That's the network connection. So we add Ethernet, and we're just going to put in here Megatree, for example. And you can select the vendor. You can select uh, Holiday Coro and Alphapix Flex if you want. It doesn't really matter. There is an upload output for an advanced customer. Uh, you can do that, but in this case, we're going to just leave it default. 
and we're going to put in that IP address, 192.168.10.124. And again, that is the IP address shown up here that you've configured for your controller. All right, so back here. Now, in our particular case, we are starting on universe 17. That was the default output. Uh, so if we look back again here, 17 through 32, 16 outputs. So let's go ahead and go over here. Uh, now, how many of those do we have? We have 16 of them. So 17 through 32. Now, how many channels? Now, a channel is one single color in each individual pixel. So if you have one pixel, you have three channels, red, green, and blue. So you need a channel that controls each of those colors independently so you can make all the different colors. So in this particular case, we're going to need 50 pixels, which is 150 channels or 50 times three so we're just gonna put 150 now if we had some unique setup or something like that we could do this where we can define each of these universes the universe number on the left and this is the channel count on the right uh, and you could define that but in this case our simple setup is so easy we don't even need to do that now I'm gonna go ahead and come over here to save we just save that and we're going to go back over here to the top and go to layout. Now, I've already created a mega tree, so let's just go ahead and delete that and start over here. I'm going to go up here to the top, and I'm just going to click on this create new tree. And you'll see it turns a little gray. And then I'm going to use my left mouse button, drag the tree out. And that creates a tree. We can give it a name like mega tree. And then we tell it. Our design now most mega trees that are 16 by 50 are just 180 degrees or half of a tree and you can see that this is so common that x lights just assumes that you have 16 strings each of them being 50 pixels now if you had something different you could configure that here now if you have the little troubleshooting steps here you can use you can go over here and right click if you're not sure how these pixels are laid out on the trees like where is string one where is string 16 come over here you right click on the uh, prop and you say node layout and you can see the actual layout. So if we start at the bottom left of the tree as we're looking at it from the front, uh, we can see that it's node 1, string 1, all the way up to node 50, string 1. And in the far right, we have node 1, string, uh, string 16. All right, now you can also look a little bit further into the actual DMX addresses. Right click over here, say wiring view. And this is a little bit harder to see because uh, depending on your monitor size. Now, first thing to keep in mind, look in the upper left-hand corner. It says reverse view. So this is looking from the inside of the tree outward or from the back of the tree towards the audience. And so in this particular case, you can see the cable labels. Um, they're actually starting string one on the far right. So if you were to stand in front of the tree, I'm going to right-click over here, and I'm going to say front. And you can now see that string one, this is the one, and then the pixel one is in the bottom left right here. And then if we go up the tree, you can see that they increase. So this is universe five or string five in this case. Uh, and that is uh, DMX or pixel, you know, one through 50. Okay. Now, let's now do some testing. Now, we did some pixel testing in the controller to make sure the pixel's working. Now, if your pixels weren't working at the controller level, stop. They will never work in the sequencing application if they don't work in the test mode on the controller. So if you've put in the test mode, and for example, you say static red, and those pixels are not red, something is wrong. Stop there and figure out what that problem is, or reach out to Holiday Coro at holidaycore.com forward slash contact us. Let's pretend that your controller has been tested. All the lights match up. Everything is looking great. And we come over to X lights. We just want to make sure everything's good here, too, because we need to make all of these settings match up and connect into the controller settings. So X lights has a great tool, tools, test, and we can output to specific universes. But we can also go over here to this model tab, and we can just check off this box for the entire mega tree. So you'll see down here it says testing 24 in channels, which is 3 times uh, 50 times 16, 24 in channels. I've also checked off this box, output to lights, to make sure it's outputting data. Then I have this background only button selected. Or, uh, and what we've done is I've moved this background intensity all the way up to the total amount, 255. 255 is the maximum intensity. 
uh, and that is full white. So at this moment, my tree, if this using this test mode would be fully white, all pixels should be on. I could make it go dim. I could make it go about half as bright here. And then I can also go over here to the RGB cycle and I can do red, green, blue, white, red, green, blue, white, and I can change the speed at which that changes. So that's it's a great tool for testing your pixels or burning them in. Now, if this is all working good and everything is fine and all your pixels are working and they all appear to be the right color and they're all working, great. Now go ahead and proceed. Now, if you're not working correctly at this point, stop, figure out what's going on, why they're not working. All right, so now we need to send data to this model through the controller over to the actual physical controller. So let's go ahead and go to the sequencer tab here. So I go up to the sequencer. You can see uh, my little tree down here. And I'm going to say File, New Sequence. I'm just going to do an animation without any audio just to get started. I'm going to select 50 milliseconds, and then I'm going to say Done. All right, now I've got a tree, and I can click on that tree and see the individual 16 strands. And you could sequence each individual strand with its own sequence uh, within the show. But we're just going to do something simple. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to pick this effect called Butterfly. And I'm going to hold it down with my mouse while I'm dragging it over here. I'm dragging it, and I drop it. Now your pixels may not actually be doing anything. I'm going to just drag this out a little bit so we can see a little more of our tree here. Um, you need to go up to the upper right corner to where it says output to lights. And this little light bulb needs to click on to make it have an arrow and turn yellow. So if your uh, light bulb is not yellow or your application doesn't have an output option that's turned on, that will not be sending data. Now at this moment, this application in real time is sending data to make these pixels on this preview look like the real world pixels on your tree. And at this point, you just simply just go through and you can drag more effects and put them all together. You can do random tests and build different types of things, uh, all kinds of different things. You would then compile these all together, create a sequence, and then you can play it. So we've got blank space here, that effect, then this effect. And you have now configured your mega tree.